right, so now that this Venture Camp All-Stars is over, I thought I'd capitalize on the opportunity and jump straight into a what-if for this season. So, the way I'd go about making the change in the thumbnail was simply to have Rhea loosen from Connor's grasp while they're in the air and start fighting him before they cross the finish line on the glider, causing both of them to crash. Now, all the eliminated contestants still come back, and all the pair's crystal setups stay the same. So now the question becomes, which pair wins? Because it's obviously not Connor and Rhea anymore. In other words, Rhea successfully goes through with Alex's plan to stop Connor from winning, but Ashley would still lasso Alec and Fiore as they're gliding in the air, bringing them down. So I'd have to think Ashley and Jake would be the next ones up to win, since Ashley would now be guarded against the Villains Alliance and give Jake enough time to climb back up the rope, and have him and Ashley glide to the finish line before anyone else. Even as Yule, Alec, and maybe Rhea try to stop her, Ashley is really strong, and so she's able to tie up Alec and Yule with her lasso. Rhea then tackles her to the ground and reaches for the pulley to screw over Jake again, but Connor throws Rhea off of Ashley, giving Jake enough time to get back up onto the cliff, and holds Rhea back long enough so that Jake and Ashley can glide to the finish line. So Ashley hugs Jake, excited to be back in the game, and Jake promises to not let her down again. Most of this challenge and character interactions play out the same, until the part where Connor gets the flag, obviously, since he's not here anymore. He gets the flag in this episode after Jake tackles Yule and Gret. Whether this was a plan between both Connor and Jake, where Jake is a distraction while Connor grabs the flag, or if Connor actually just snuck up on all three of them or not, doesn't really matter, because even though we know Ashley and Jake are almost definitely traveling together, Jake was somehow enough to hold back both Yule and Gret in this scene, and so even if they can see her coming, Ashley should be able to yoink the flag no problem by just filling in for Connor. And the only reason Connor lost the flag in the end was when Alec had a conversation with him which led to him figuring out that he was hiding the flag, which was only possible since Alec and Connor already had a pre-existing relationship, one that does not exist between Ashley and Alec, who have only been bitter rivals with basically no personal connection to each other. So, Ashley would just skip past Alec, and instead willingly gives immunity to Allie, since she already has it from last episode. Allie now has an internal conflict, realizing that both Rhea and Ashley willingly gave her the flag during the challenge, and that she doesn't know who to trust, since having that happen twice in one day seems way too lucky to be a coincidence. After having this thought process, she comes to the conclusion that she can't trust the villains, but she can't necessarily trust Ashley and Jake either. The latter because she obviously can't stand him, and the former because she knows or at least anticipates Ashley choosing Jake over her if push comes to shove. So with the Villains Alliance and Jake and Ashley out of the running, Allie is left between Tom or Aiden for who to pick to bring to the dinner. And I think Aiden is the option that makes more sense. After all, they both have a mutual hatred of Jake at this point, they're the only non-evil people left from season 2, and out of everyone here, Allie feels like Aiden is the most trustworthy and easiest to get into an alliance with. And they do just that over dinner. Jake berates Allie for not choosing Ashley after she helped her win immunity in the first place, which just makes Allie even more sure of her decision and tells Jake not everything is about him, and he should stop whining for once. Jake is about to go off, but, but Ashley sternly tells him to cut it out, and tells him this is where he fulfills his promise to her not to screw things up again, and let his emotions get the better of him. Jake apologizes to Ashley and leaves with a bitter glare directed at Allie. Ashley tells Allie there's no hard feelings between them about the dinner, and she just hopes she can trust her and Jake. Allie says yes and gives her a fist bump, but internally she still has her own doubts. Because Jake and Ashley both have immunity and Aiden likes Tom, the two agree at dinner that they should form a temporary truce with all the non-villains for tonight's vote. And with Ashley still in the mix to get Jake on board and Tom being easy to persuade with Aiden, all five of them vote together. And since none of the villains have immunity anymore, they decide to target the person who's clearly the de facto leader of the Villains Alliance, Alec. All the villains still vote for Tom, making it a tied 5 to 5 vote like in the original triggering the same tiebreaker. And it's actually pretty easy to determine who wins here. Since Alec gave Gabby the tip to double knot the sticks ties, which is arguably what allowed her to win the tiebreaker, he beats Tom using the same method but doing it faster, more efficiently, and with sturdier hands. And Tom still has the same exit in the original, where he promises Jake that they'll patch things up later. Because Alec didn't win the dinner in this version, Alec isn't drunk now, but his paranoia drastically increases with him barely dodging elimination last night, which causes him to lash out at Yule when he catches him being abusive to Gret. Gret is shocked to hear someone else stand up for her like that, even though Alec admitted out loud that he was only doing it to keep the Villains Alliance together and not for any moral reasons. Yule snaps back at Alec, telling him to mind his own business, and the two of them are about to go for each other's throats, when Gret gets between them and tells them both to stop. Yule storms off telling Gret her fat ass can go find another boyfriend because they're finished. Gret walks off pissed at Alec and asks him if he's happy with himself, to which he meekly replies, no, after she walks away. Aiden wouldn't see any of this happen since he went to pee by the tree near the two people who won the dinner, which in this case consists of Allie and himself, whereas the villain shenanigans are happening by the beach. 
so none of the heroes know about this. The VR challenge then begins, and everyone still has the same powers, except Connor's super strength being replaced by Ashley having a superhuman Texas Ranger costume, which consists of a whip akin to the one the villain had in the Kingsman sequel, which basically acts as a laser rope, and a holster that she can fire with using superhuman precision and accuracy, like Aaron Black from Mortal Kombat. Jake and Aiden still manage to beat Alec and Rhea the same way they do originally. The only difference is Alec and Rhea's conversation isn't about them kissing, but now it's about scrambling to find a way to keep the villains' alliance together, which Jake and Aiden overhear enough of to figure that there might be a chink in the armor for them to find. Also, Ashley and Allie fight against Gret and Yule, but because Yule is pissed at Gret for not taking his side against Alex, especially after Gret tells him Alec wasn't wrong about him doing and saying all those awful things, Yule screams at her and tells her that's the worst apology he's ever heard. Ashley uses this to gain the element of surprise as she shoots both of them. Yule nullifies the bullet using his electricity, but Gret's water bending only slows it down before hitting her in the shoulder. Gret cries out for help, but Yule tells her to help herself and insists on taking Ashley and Allie 2v1. He actually puts up a decent fight as Gabby uses her snake transformation to rescue Gret, and then uses her venom to knock Gret out to put her out of her misery, since the pain still feels real in VR and she doesn't want to see her suffer. Yule and the two girls are basically at a stalemate, since Yule can't kill one without the other intervening, but his electricity stops either one of them from beating him. Eventually, Yule gets the idea to pretend Jake is in trouble to electrocute Ashley, but before he can finish her off, Gabby avenges Gret by turning into a bear and mauling Yule to the point where his arms are useless, and then just eats his face. Allie and Ashley thank Gabby for saving them, before Ashley dies of her wounds. This means Jake, Aiden, Allie, and Gabby are all in the final round with the monster. Nobody really had the power to take out the monster, it just kind of fell through the volcano, and Jake saved everyone by using his telekinesis, so I see no reason why that still doesn't happen again, giving Jake immunity. Anyway, Gabby talks to Rhea and Alec about how they have to vote Yule off, not just for being an awful person, but because he betrayed Gret during the challenge, so he can't be trusted. Rhea doesn't want to weaken the alliance, but Alec is actually on board this time after their big fight, since he thinks Yule is a lost cause and a liability anyway. So now Yule gets voted out by everyone except for himself and Rhea, which is 7 to 2 votes, and has the same rant roasting the shit out of everybody before he gets eliminated. Jake and Aiden start getting along now, which makes Ashley happy, but worries Allie as she needs him to be her main ally. So she talks to Aiden to make sure that he'll stay true to his word, since even though he likes Jake now, he agreed with Allie and promises if it comes down to it, he'll pick her over him in a vote. But it also wouldn't be the worst idea to not shun him entirely either. And Allie begrudgingly says, fine. Because Connor isn't here, I do think Crystal would change the pairs a bit here, since Alec and Ashley don't really have any interesting dynamics together. So instead, the pairs are Jake and Alec, Ashley and Allie, and the other two stay the same. Aiden still teaches Rhea, Alec, and Jake how to do the weird TikTok dances, and those four finish first. During the challenge, Alec tells Jake he was impressed after hearing about how he won the challenge yesterday, and that he wants him and Ashley to join the Villains' Alliance, getting rid of Ali and Aiden first, and then after that even offers to get rid of Gabby and Gret next. Jake tells Alec to his face he doesn't trust him, especially after what he did last season, not to mention this season too. Alec tells Jake it wasn't personal, he's just trying to play the game like everybody else. Jake asks him if he's ever done anything that wasn't for strategy, and Alec brings up voting for Yule after the way he treated Gret, but Jake says, Oh please, you just did that to save face, and Alec doesn't respond and frowns, implying he knows Jake is right. But when Jake overhears a conversation between Ashley and Allie in the cave, where Ashley is trying to convince Allie to trust Jake, but she says he's still an insecure prick, this prompts Jake to change his mind and strike a deal with Alec. He's willing to vote off Allie with him next episode, since this episode isn't a vote, but asks why in his elimination order plan Rhea is being kept safe. Alec tenses up at the question and tries to dodge it, but Jake insists on digging in if he's going to agree to this, especially after voting Tom out. And even though normally Alec keeps a cool head and is usually pretty self-kept and introverted, after almost getting eliminated, losing Connor and Fiore, and having his alliance split apart, he breaks down and admits he has a soft spot for Rhea, even though he knows he shouldn't, and becomes a blubbering mess talking about everything wrong with his life, including his ex-wife and the divorce. Jake has a confessional saying, man, and I thought I had problems. But this moment of unfiltered vulnerability actually wins Jake over, because it makes him think maybe Alec actually does have a soul. Most of the Gret and Gabby stuff stays the same, up to the point where Gabby loses her phone thinking it's Gret's. Gret would now feel even more guilty about the way she treated Gabby in season one, since in this version, Gabby was the one who saved Gret during the superhero VR challenge last episode, not the other way around like in the original, which changes how she reacts to Gabby when she tells her to stop, and instead of telling her to worry about it later, Let's her explain she dropped Gret's phone in the water by accident. So Gret pedals back to where it fell, and it miraculously still works, but by the time they get to Crystal, they're still in last. Crystal tells them whoever puts the phone in the basket last is eliminated, but because they went to grab Gabby's phone out of the water to check if it still worked, 
They no longer accidentally swap phones by the time they get to the end. And Gret willingly sacrifices herself to let Gabby stay in the game. Gabby protests at first, but Gret insists after she saved her last episode and befriended her even after everything she did, especially helping her overcome Yule, she feels like Gabby deserves to play more than she does. And this act of selflessness makes Gabby's evil alter ego fade away, with Gabby looking into space, making everyone else wonder where this is going, and Gabby is about to give her phone to Crystal before asking Gret if she's sure. She says yes, and with that, Gret is eliminated after giving Gabby a big hug. And thanks Alec for standing up for her, which only makes Alec feel worse, knowing why he really did it. Alec and Rhea talk strategy despite him still being an emotional mess, something Rhea notices and says privately that it's not promising. However, he does tell Rhea about getting Jake on their side. Rhea asks how Alec was able to do that, and he tells her he did it by telling the truth. This weirds Rhea out since that isn't like them, and she asks him to elaborate. Alec doesn't admit he has a thing for her since, again, he's not drunk, but he does tell her about his messy divorce, which Rhea flippantly tells him, whatever works, I guess, and tries to continue bringing Allie to her side as well. Because Gret isn't here anymore, no one is able to figure out that the immunity totem is on top of a tree, so nobody finds it this episode. Jake talks to Ashley about working with Alec, since he promised he wouldn't let her down again and wants to run it by her. Ashley says it's a terrible idea and that Alec can't be trusted, even after Jake tells her about everything Alec admitted to him. Meanwhile, Aiden and Allie talk to Gabby and ask her to leave Alec and Rhea behind in the Villains Alliance, but it doesn't work because of what Aiden did to Ellie. It is worth mentioning, though, that Aiden says he still doesn't trust Jake despite no longer resenting him this episode, meaning that as much as he hates Rhea, when Allie tells him about Rhea reaching out, he's okay with the idea as long as they can get rid of one of the other villains. During the challenge, most of the same questions are asked, except the final three turns into Jake, Ashley, and Gabby. Jake is here because he won originally and is more honest about himself. Ashley's here because she's really strong so she could lift a lot of the weights, and she also has nothing to hide. And Gabby's here because she's also pretty strong, has a newfound sense of mental clarity after Gret's sacrifice, and also because nobody would really be targeting her. So once Alec, Rhea, Ali, and Aiden are out of the challenge, Ashley takes this as an opportunity to prove to Ali that Jake can be trusted but accidentally does the opposite after he responds no to her question of whether she thinks Allie can be trusted. And when she asks why, Jake says it's because she's always making everything about herself and is way too insecure. Gabby would ask Ashley questions about how she feels about Jake, but she answers honestly each time, saying that she does trust him despite his flaws. This tips Allie over the edge and forces Aiden to let Rhea have the three of them vote for Jake tonight, and without immunity or knowing where the totem is, is forced to agree since, like I said, Aiden said this episode he wants to make moves outside the Heroes Alliance, and doesn't trust Jake as a competitor despite liking him as a person. So while he isn't happy about it, he knows it's the right call. As for the challenge, Jake, Ashley, and Gabby don't tell any lies, so Crystal gets bored and decides that Gabby, Ashley, and Jake will do a tiebreaker where they all have to lift more weight every 10 seconds, and whoever is the final competitor left standing wins immunity. Which I think in this case would be Ashley. Jake begs Ashley to save him this vote, and because she knows he's in trouble and he's been honest with her, she agrees to sever ties with the other heroes if it means keeping Jake in the game. So they pull out all the stops and ask Gabby for help, and agree to vote any way she wants, which would still be to vote Aiden out to avenge Ellie, and Ashley also agrees to involve Alec in this plan, who would have no issue voting Aiden off too. However, Rhea tells Alec about her plan to vote out Jake and doesn't want to lose her goodwill with Allie, since if Aiden is gone, Allie's greatest ally is gone, and that would make Allie trusting Rhea a lot more difficult. This leaves Alec in a difficult spot since he doesn't want to betray Jake after having a weirdly genuine moment with him, but he quickly changes his mind after Rhea kisses him, because at this point she can tell he has a thing for her, even when sober, and she uses this to convince him to get her way. So Aiden gets three votes between Gabby, Ashley, and Jake, but Rhea, Allie, Aiden, and Alec vote for Jake, tipping the scales to give him four votes, meaning he's eliminated. Ashley apologizes for putting him in this position, but Jake tells her it's okay, and that it's kinda karma for what he did to her anyway, and gives her a hug. Aiden and Alec both apologize for voting for him, while Allie and Rhea smugly tell him goodbye. Jake forgives Aiden since they're on good terms, but he doesn't forgive Alec since they had a deal, and asks Alec if everything he told him was true or if it was just a lie. Alec frowns and doesn't respond, and Jake just says, yeah, I figured and walks to the bus. Alec, feeling even guiltier than before, talks to Rhea about the kiss and tells her how that kiss was the only thing keeping him going after everything that's happened. Rhea gently tells him it was the heat of the moment and that she doesn't want to date him, but she genuinely feels bad about the whole thing after the fact, since she can tell Alec is a mess, but she doesn't let him see that. Ashley is afraid that with Jake gone, she's going to be next, but Gabby comes to the rescue telling her to get a hold of herself and that the two of them need to work together since it's what Jake and Ellie would want, cheering Ashley up. 
Now, because Jake isn't here to distract Allie anymore during the challenge, she, along with everyone else, manages to climb the mountain and ride the zipline toward the puzzle. We see in the original that Rhea did the mountain and the zipline the fastest. Obviously, now Gret isn't here, and Rhea wouldn't try to kick Alec off the mountain since he's the furthest thing from a threat to her right now, but she still does that to Gabby and Ashley, making them both angry. As Rhea is ziplining, Ashley, having gotten to the top of the mountain, uses her lasso skills to wrap Rhea in rope and pull back against her momentum. Having a look of furious rage that she herself realizes moments later in a confessional she's never had before. At least not since she blamed herself for the farm burning down. We then cut back to the action where Aiden, Allie, and Alec are all not too far behind. So with all of this commotion going on, they manage to slip past the others and get a slight lead on the puzzle. But after that, Rhea cuts Ashley's lasso and gets to the puzzle alongside them. Ashley is distraught at the the destruction of her lucky lasso, and Gabby tells her it's time to go. Rhea has a confessional saying Ashley has been a pain in her ass ever since she got back, and she knows exactly who needs to go next. So with everyone doing the puzzle at relatively similar times, with Gabby and Ashley lagging slightly behind, the way this challenge plays out is very interesting. Gret isn't here, so she can't win the challenge anymore, and in the original, the next three closest were Connor, Alec, and Rhea. But Connor isn't here, Rhea needed to cheat off other people's puzzles to progress, so I imagine she's not very good at it. And Alec is even more of an emotional wreck here than he was in the original, so his focus would be way off. However, Allie is actually in a really good position here, because with Jake not being in distraction anymore, and having gotten to the puzzle section the fastest out of everyone here this time, she could use her epic gamer skills from playing Tetris or whatever other puzzle game, I don't know, and actually win the challenge this time. Rhea walks over to Alec and tells him they need to vote off Ashley for being a threat, and that in the meantime, he should go talk to Gabby to recruit her back into the Villains' Alliance. Alec asks what she's gonna do, and Rhea tells him she's gonna talk to Allie. Allie is proud of herself and what she's been able to accomplish, especially with Jake not around to hold her back anymore, and becomes inspired to look for the immunity totem, which is still up in the tree. As she's looking for it, Rhea bumps into her and tells her the two of them, plus Aiden and Alec, need to vote out Ashley. And Allie suddenly looks at her suspiciously. Rhea asks why she's looking at her like that, and Allie says she's fine with the vote, but she thinks she's hiding something. Allie asks Rhea if she has the immunity totem, and Rhea says no, since she doesn't. Allie continues looking at her funny and tells her that she's willing to vote for Ashley, but if Rhea finds the totem, she has to tell her about it. Rhea agrees with her fingers crossed behind her back, saying privately there's no way in hell she'd actually do that. Gabby and Ashley pull Aiden and Allie aside and urge them to vote for Rhea, since they know she's evil and it's only a matter of time before she stabs them in the back. While Aiden's not the biggest fan of either of them right now, given he really hates Rhea after she almost killed him last season, he doesn't think it's the worst idea. But when Ashley tells him it's the least they can do after voting for Jake, Allie rolls her eyes and crosses her arms and privately says, classic Jake. Even when he's not here, he's more annoying than an unskippable cuts. Scene. She then goes on a tirade about how she's tired of other people trying to control her with guilt, and she's completely on Rhea's side now, especially since she believes she'll hold up her end of the bargain with the totem. Alec can't seem to find Gabby anywhere since she's tagging along with Ashley, but luckily for him, as she's looking around, he spots the immunity totem up in the tree. His luck is limited, however, as when he tries to climb the tree to grab it, he falls just short of doing so. Rhea sees Alec dusting himself off moments after falling and asks what he's doing, and Alec hesitates for a moment before lying to her and saying nothing much. Rhea gets closer to Alec and starts flirting with him again, twirling her hair and telling him if something is wrong, he can always trust her to listen. And because this happened right after he spotted the immunity idol, this interaction makes it click into Alec's brain how transparently obvious Rhea's flirtatious manipulation tactics are, and can't believe he let himself get fooled for so long, but still decides to play along for now and pretend that Rhea still has him by the balls. So at elimination, Gabby and Ashley vote for Rhea. And while Alec doesn't trust Rhea, they're still in an alliance, and Ashley is still a bigger threat to him, so they both vote for Ashley. Now, I do believe Aiden would be convinced to vote against Rhea, not only because of his personal vendetta against her, and her generally not being very trustworthy, but also because he does feel kinda bad about voting for Jake last episode, even though it was a decent call for his game. So this is a way to kinda make it right in a sense. Allie, on the other hand, is voting with Rhea because of how fed up she is with people telling her what to do, and regardless of strategy, she'd respect Rhea more for being less critical of her behavior, as opposed to Ashley with the it's the least you could do comment. This makes the vote a 3 to 3 tie, and because the tiebreaker with Tom already happened, I need to come up with a new one. Now, I have literally no idea what it could be, since the first tiebreaker wasn't related to the challenge at all, so I decided to make one from scratch. What I came up with was two people standing on a large platform that gradually shrinks in size as more and more tiles disappear, and the last person standing on the platform wins. 
Players can try to knock each other off using whatever they want, with various objects scattered across the platform. The match begins and the edges of the platform begin to fall. Ashley starts to lose her balance and Rhea taunts her, saying this will be over sooner than she thought. Ashley then regains her balance and picks up a nearby rock and chucks it at Rhea. Rhea dodges it and picks up a book and hits Ashley in the face with it. The platform shrinks again, and Ashley becomes furious as she lunges at Rhea, tackling her on top of the platform. Suddenly, the middle platform that they're both on crumbles and they're both hanging off of it dangling above the ground. And because Rhea is lighter than Ashley, she's able to hoist herself up quicker and grabs Ashley's hand off the platform. Rhea's about to step on her other hand when Ashley kicks the platform Rhea's standing on from under her, causing her to run back to the edge. Ashley gets back onto the platform and rushes Rhea, but Rhea purposefully cracks the one she's standing on open, gets out of the way, and trips Ashley, causing her to fall off the platform once and for all. Gabby rushes to Ashley and asks if she's okay, and Ashley says she is. But Crystal announces Rhea is the winner and Ashley is eliminated. Rhea says, yes, in your face, and Gabby walks Ashley out, where she tells her to stop Rhea by any means necessary. This episode begins with Gabby talking to herself again. She tells her psyche she thought she got rid of her, but the imaginary Gabby tells her that that was the personification of wrath and vengeance that went away, whereas this time it's the fill-in for her loneliness after losing Ellie, Gret, and Ashley, and not having anyone left. Gabby tells herself to do what Ellie would do, which was to talk to Alec even though they don't like him. This also makes sense since they're the last season one people left and they're both from the Villains Alliance. Gabby finds Rhea flirting with Alec before Alec starts to become visibly annoyed and storms off wanting to be left alone. Gabby once again thinks about what Ellie would do, and decides it's a perfect opportunity to split them apart, even having one of her signature evil laughs. Gabby talks to Alec about ganging up on Rhea, and Alec knows he can't trust Rhea with helping him get the immunity totem, so against his better judgment, he decides to enlist Gabby's help with getting it from the tree, which she manages to do with the two of them helping each other up. Gabby talks to herself thinking that she's going to tell herself to take the totem for herself and betray Alec, but her reflection actually just tells her to trust her own judgment, which in this case is to follow up on Alec's deal, saying that if she gives him the totem, he'll vote for Rhea and make sure she wins today's challenge. Rhea, Ali, and Aiden all meet up to agree on voting out Gabby next, and Aiden starts to argue they should go for Alec instead. Aiden has a confessional admitting he's annoyed Rhea's lasted this long despite being in an alliance with her. Aiden insists they target Alec next or the deal's off, and even though she's annoyed and Rhea tells Aiden off because he voted for her last night, She's ultimately willing to do it, since she was probably just going to dump him the next episode anyway, because she can feel him start to slip away. For the horse race, Rhea and Allie get the same horse as they did in the original. Alec gets Connor's horse, Aiden gets Gret's horse, and Gabby gets Jake's horse. Alec and Gabby work together side by side, much like Jake and Connor did, since while yeah, they don't want to make it too obvious to Rhea that they're working together, there's not much they can do to hide it in a horse race, so they just kind of go for it anyway. This makes Rhea even more impatient than before, so she kicks Bojack and Bojack kicks her off his back and she still gets stuck up in the tree. She calls for help and Alec is contemplating what to do, and Gabby tells him to follow his heart much like she told herself. Alec decides to save Rhea from the tree against her better judgment and put her on his horse. Rhea calls Alec her hero and is about to kiss him, but as she does this, Alec feigns insecurity and asks if Rhea still has feelings for Connor. Rhea tells him she never liked that chump and that she and Alec were meant to be together all along. Alec smiles and says, that's all I needed to hear and makes the horse take a hard stop, causing Rhea to fly off the horse right as he's about to cross the finish line, and with Gabby's horse being the next fastest, she crosses the finish line before either of them and wins immunity. Rhea is infuriated with Alec and asks why he did that, but Alec asks her if she can honestly say she wouldn't have done the same, and Rhea can't bring herself to answer as the camera zooms in on her, only showing a silent look of guilt. Mimicking what Jake said to him a few episodes ago, Alec says, yeah, that's what I thought. Allie has a confessional saying that was cold, even if it is Rhea. Gabby and Alec both vote for Rhea, while Rhea gets her alliance of three to vote off Alec. Allie is still on board with her, and even though Aiden doesn't like Rhea, he feels as though taking advantage of the villain splitting apart is a net positive. So voting for Alec is perfectly fine with him too. However, before the votes are counted, Alec uses his immunity totem to protect himself, meaning his three votes are nullified. And since Rhea has the next most votes with two, she's out. Rhea is infuriated and says this is an outrage, but Gabby just says bye bye with glee. And when Rhea tells Alec he missed out on someone way out of his league, Alec replies with a dull expression and says he'll take his chances with drinking alone. Rhea is like, ugh, unbelievable, isn't anybody gonna walk me out? And Ali shrugs and is like, why not? Ali thanks Rhea for being the only one to recognize Ali as her own person, as she feels like nobody else did, and Rhea tells her to remember this word of advice. Never let other people bring you down by telling you you went too far. Never. Rhea angrily steps onto the bus, and the episode ends with Ali having a confessional not knowing what to do going forward. For the first time in a while, Alec is in a genuinely good mood, 
and tells Gabby he's impressed with what both of them were able to pull off yesterday. Gabby agrees, and Alec tells her they're the last real villains left in the game, and wants to go to the final two with her. Gabby excitedly agrees, but doesn't love the idea of being labeled a villain now that she's grown to trust herself so much more. Ali and Aiden, on the other hand, both have a really hard time trusting each other with how much they've been flip-flopping all over the place. It especially doesn't help how relieved Aiden is that Rhea's gone, considering she was Ali's best ally in the game at this point. Frankly, even more so than Aiden was. Nonetheless, they agree the other two are bigger threats for the time being. When the challenge begins, Gabby and Aiden immediately go back and forth shocking each other, and keep running into dead ends, so they're behind the other two. Alec keeps a steady pace while Ali takes the lead like in the original, and blocks Alec's remote with a shock absorption collar. Alec asks how she did that, and Ali explains it like in the original, but right as she puts it down and is about to place her final piece of clothing on her dummy, Aiden uses his last shock on her. And Alec uses his last shock on Aiden, and so he wins the challenge. Alec is feeling more confident than ever being in the final three, and Gabby just maniacally laughs. Ali has a bleak thing saying, game over. After the challenge, Ali tells Aiden, what the fuck is wrong with you? I thought we had a deal. But Aiden says they only had a voting pact. After all, it's the final four, so immunity was way too important to compromise in any way, and snaps back at her saying she totally would have done the same. Ali claps back saying he shouldn't make assumptions, and that thanks to that brilliant move, now neither one of them have immunity. Aiden says, oh, you want to talk about brilliant moves? How about letting the psycho who tried to kill me carry you the entire game, and then whining when people criticize you? It's funny how much you hated Jay considering you're just like him, except unlike him, you never learned your lesson. And as Aiden finishes his tirade, he storms off. This is the final straw for Allie, as she also storms off, and screams in Aiden's face saying she's done letting people tell her that her struggles aren't valid, and she has a confessional stating she wasn't sure before, but now she's convinced Rio was absolutely right. Nobody gets to tell her what is and isn't going too far. Now, Gabby and Alec were going to vote Ali since they think she's the bigger threat, but she walks up to them and straight up tells them she and Aiden are voting for each other, and that they should vote with her simply because she deserves to be in the finale more. And, if it comes down to a popularity contest, Aiden is way too well-liked to go up against, whereas people just love to complain about her, so she's the better option. Alec and Gabby look at each other, and Alec says, sound logic. Gabby doesn't really care either way, but enjoys that feeling of having all this power, but she figures this is a way to justify voting out Aiden to finally avenge Ellie once and for all, while still maintaining another justifiable reason to do so. So for the vote, Aiden is eliminated in a 3-1. to one. Aiden says, wow, a whole finale of villains, and Allie tells him to cope and seethe as he leaves. So this episode actually has quite a few changes now. Rhea is still pissed about Alec turning on her, and Fiore tells her to cope and seethe. She tries to talk to Connor, but he's still pissed at her and tells her that Alec was right about her. People like her won't change, because deep down, they don't want to. Rhea now becomes internally furious at Alec and swears revenge against him the first chance she gets, complaining that they were both villains, but she's being treated like the devil while he managed to get into the finale for it. Tom and Jake finally have a heart-to-heart, -heart where Tom apologizes for ghosting him for two years and shunning him during the competition, and explains that he let his own insecurities and scars cloud his judgment. His main flaw was that he was afraid of change hurting him again, but he knows better now, so he asks Jake if he wants to finally give dating a try. Jake tells Tom the way he treated him really hurt, but he also understands what it's like to let your past control you and trick you into making poor decisions. And ever since Jake was sent to the hotel, they were able to spend a lot of time together, and now Jake feels comfortable enough to say yes to dating Tom, as long as they take things slow. Most of the people around them say, aww, except for Yule, who's like, Ugh, don't make me throw up. Then Yule makes the same comment about the dinner, confronts Gret, and still gets burned in the face. Ellie still regrets how cold she was this season, especially to Gabby, but is happy that Gabby has made it this far and says she's proud of her. Now, most of the other stuff stays the same, but since the finale is mostly made up of different people, I decided to change the three people who become helpers in episode 20. I used a random number generator, but also only chose options that I think made narrative sense. Like, I'm not going to make Ashley a helper for Alec, or Lake or Miriam a helper for Allie, because there's no real connections there to play off of. So anyway, here's what I got. The first person to become a helper is Hunter, who belongs to Allie. Aiden still climbs up on the roof with Nina attacking him with her demonic telekinesis, but instead of the golden ticket landing near James when he's talking to Yule, it just lands in Hunter's hands instead. As far as who he gives the disadvantage to, he has basically no connection to Alec or Gabby whatsoever, so I think he'd give the disadvantage to Alec simply because he'd want to give Tess better odds at winning the 100 grand since he's close to her. Speaking of which, Tess is the next helper who belongs to Gabby. This is pretty simple, Tess would spend most of her time chilling on the stairs drawing, but accidentally steps on the floorboard right above the winning token before Yule does this time and just grabs it. And finally, Alec's helper would be Connor. 
Connor would be more motivated and also not injured this time, and he would find the golden ticket buried in one of the holes before Fiore gets there, but is still kind of aloof, so he finds it after the other two. So he's just paired with Alec automatically. Because Yule doesn't win this time, he would still not reject James' advice at perhaps not being a complete scumbag, but it's still Yule we're talking about, so he doesn't really get redeemed either. Mostly just sulks, honestly. Finally, the finalist reactions to their helpers at the end are as follows. Allie is conflicted since she knows Hunter, but is worried they're gonna argue again if he doesn't trust her judgment, which could be an issue, since she wouldn't know about Hunter telling Tess he wants to support her this episode. Gabby sighs and looks disappointed, saying she hopes Tess can forgive her for what she did, in a way that kinda indicates Gabby legitimately feels guilty for what she did. Alec becomes more determined than usual, and also a little worried, saying Connor is a stand-up guy who deserved better, no thanks to me. And now we are at the penultimate episode. Allie knows Gabby and Alec are most likely going to work together, so she doesn't really bother trying to change that, and insists on doing this by herself, briefly forgetting that Hunter is also going to be helping her. Alec tells Gabby they have to stick together to take Allie out, especially with him having a disadvantage. Gabby starts to question if he's really only saying this to save his own skin, which she tells him straight up, and Alec responds by bringing up the fact that, whether he is or not, Hunter and Allie together would be way too strong, and Ellie would want her to eliminate the potential power couple threat over him since at this point they have no knowledge of how the weird two-part finale thing works, and would just assume that the partner they get now is sticking with them till the end. Allie's letter from home is the same as in canon. Gabby's is from his dad, who surprisingly says he's proud of her for developing more sound reasoning and making it this far, and Alec gets a drawing from his son that he put on the fridge out of pity, as well as part of the divorce papers from his wife Cheryl, something which both Gabby and Allie both legitimately feel sorry for him about. Allie even says in a confessional she hopes Alec at least gets into the final two just out of pity. The hell Helpers are introduced, and Hunter immediately apologizes to Allie for his behavior before, and promises to let her take the lead. Allie genuinely appreciates him saying that, and it even helps her tone back her ruthlessness a bit, since Hunter being there to support her puts her a little bit less on edge. Tess and Gabby are pretty awkward around each other, but both apologize for how the whole Ellie thing went down, and Tess says it's water under the bridge. Connor is happy to help Alec and tells him he's proud of how he handled Rhea, since while not as mad or disappointed in her as in the original, is still not by her biggest fan by any means in this version, and has no reason to believe Rhea can or will change. Alec thanks Connor and says that really means a lot, and that he could really use a win with everything going on in his life, and Connor says, let's make sure you get one. Now, there's a bit of a problem when it comes to examining this episode, which is the original elimination of this episode makes no sense. Allie loses because apparently she lost her gem somewhere before finishing, but at no point is this shown or even implied, especially since her bag was closed the entire time. I rewatched the episode just to be sure, and the only two things I can think of are her not closing her bag when she puts the last gems in before the scorpions attack, or that the bag was torn as she was crawling through the tunnel to escape the scorpions and they fell out of a hole in her bag, neither of which were really made clear in my opinion if those were the case. And because I think the cause of Ali's loss is already questionable in the original, and now she has Hunter by her side instead of Fiore which would help her go much faster, not to mention Rhea wouldn't taunt her and hold her back, and again she'd have Hunter's protection, I think she probably finishes first. This leaves Gabby and Alec who would be working together, however Tess would tell Gabby she feels bad leaving Hunter and Allie out like this, and while Gabby doesn't really care at first, since she thinks it's a good strategy, Alec having the disadvantage would clearly start to hold her back, and when Alec and Connor ask for their help, Gabby would intentionally only look for a certain amount of gems to give them to make sure they don't have enough to win without spending extra time looking for them, just as an extra failsafe. Gabby feels bad about this, which she tells Tess, but Tess says it's not a malicious thing to do, and besides, $3 million is on the line. However, Alec would notice the number of gems is off, and he'd tell Connor to look for the other three or four, while he very carefully and slightly opens Gabby's bag, which he admits in confessional is really just a Hail Mary, hoping one of them falls out to buy him enough time, if it does come down to the wire. Miraculously, this actually works, as all the Emily stuff with the Scorpions plays out the same as in the original, as they all escape the mines, but while Gabby runs away ahead of Alec, and Alec struggles to catch his breath as he slows down, Gabby drops one of her gems by accident before crossing the finish line, and Alec sprints across afterward, genuinely surprised to hear his plan worked, after Crystal counts everyone's gems and notices that Gabby is missing one, so Gabby is eliminated. Gabby is really bummed out, since after all this time, she thought learning to trust her instincts would lead her to victory, but Tess tells her the important thing is she learned to trust herself and that everyone's instincts are wrong from time to time. Gabby asks, even with $3 million on the line, and Crystal tells her, I guess so, and announces the final two. Ali suspects something is fishy about how Alec won, and Alec admits in confessional that his plan was a Hail Mary, but it worked, and he learned from his loss to Fiore back in season one, 
that the best way to win a challenge like this is to hang back and let someone else take the fall. Allie and Hunter apologize to Tess for her loss, but she says it's okay and roots for them to win. And Allie promises that no matter what, the three of them will hang out after the show, and they all have a big group hug. Connor wishes both players luck, and Hunter hypes up Allie telling her how proud of her she is. Now for part one of the finale, we need two additional helpers that weren't already in the last episode, and so I think Rio would volunteer for Allie, because in this version she still has some amount of respect for her, for standing up for herself and stuff, and Gabby would tag along with her since she's bummed out about Alex screwing her over this close to the end, and this way she at least has a chance for a small victory. Fiore would offer to help Alec because one, free money, two, she's impressed that Alec used the same strategy she used in season one to screw him over, and three, because she has a pre-existing relationship with Alec. But despite the money on the table, I think the only other person willing to help Alec is Yule, just for the money, since most people would be rooting for Allie. And again, Connor can't go. So the chariots holding faceless knights surrounds both teams in the arena as Gabby and Rhea cover for Allie. While Yule refuses to defend Alec and insists he have to do the heavy work, which Alec responds to by picking Yule up and using him as a human shield against his will. And Yule says, not what I meant, asshole. Gabby is hit and Rhea draws fire away from Allie, but Allie still has to deal with a barrage of arrows, which she dodges with the cartwheel she did in the original. Fiore laughs at Yule's misfortune and runs with Alec away from the fire, but Fiore trips and Alec stops to help her. Fiore tells Alec to leave her and keep running, but he tells her he's not leaving her behind and puts her on his shoulders and continues running until he gets ambushed by the same mine that Jake stepped on, making him get covered in blue paint, which gives Allie the better armor for the final showdown. Fiore and Alec have the same moment as in the original, where Fiore tries to come to his rescue and Alec tells her that was stupid, and Fiore tells him to shut up and ask if he's hurt. Alec is surprised to have Fiore and Connor genuinely believe in him up to this point, despite everything around him painting him out to be the bad guy. While Ali is increasingly excited, but also insists to herself she can't celebrate just yet. And now, the second part of the challenge begins, where the first person to get three wins on being the last one on the platform is the winner of the season. Now, while I do think Ali is more agile than Alec, Alec is strong enough to at least be even in terms of fighting strength with Tom consistently, who is a trained officer and former spy, and also has a well above average build, meaning I think Alec has the edge and brute force. But since Ali has the better armor, I think the strength would be relatively equalized, which leaves her with a notable agility advantage, which she uses to dodge and surprise attack Alec and knock him off in round one. Alec quickly learns her attack pattern since they're reminiscent of a stilted Street Fighter character moveset, since even though he doesn't play video games, he can still use this to dodge Allie's attacks and use all her movement against her in the heavy suit of armor to knock her off in round two, and again in round three, as she just charges at him angrily and has too much momentum, so he just trips her off. Allie takes a break to regain her composure and gets words of encouragement from both Hunter and Tess, and then comes back in round four with a much more fluid attack style, throwing Alec off his game since he wasn't expecting that, and easily knocking Alec off. So it's tied 2-2 two to two and it all comes down to the final round, where both of them charge at each other and push against each other in the center of the platform. Alec swings his wooden sword and it breaks on Ali's shield, sending him into a panic as he kicks her in the shin to take her shield, but before Alec can pick it up and use it for himself, Ali tackles him to the ground and barely misses his neck with her sword as she swings it at him. Alec gets up on top of her briefly, but she kicks him out from under him, and she grabs her shield back while Alec gets up and distances himself from her. The two then face each other once again, and have one final clash as they both leap in the air to drop kick the other off the platform. And this interaction would play in slow motion, with everyone else looking in shock and suspense. And, because most of their stamina has been mostly exhausted by this point, I have no idea who would win. I know some people might view this as a gigantic cop-out, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm using a random wheel to determine the winner. All right, and the winner is... Allie, congratulations, Allie. Wow, what a fantastic fight. So yeah, after that slow-mo moment, we cut back to the two of them, with Allie unable to move for a minute, still barely sitting on the platform, with Alec lying on his back on the ground. Meaning that the winner of Disventure Camp All-Stars is Allie. Alec is devastated at his loss, but Connor tells him he played a good game, and Fiore consoles him, telling him he tried his best. Rhea then walks up to Alec and rubs it in that she beat him since she won the 100 grand and he got squat, but Connor stands up for Alec and tells her off, saying that one tenth mil isn't gonna save her personal life from tanking because of her shitty personality. Rhea then curses out Connor and walks away, calling both of them bro gasses. Alec thanks Connor for standing up for him, and Connor says, Anytime, man. And Fiore smirks and says to both Connor and Alec, 
Man, you both have awful taste in women. And Alec playfully punches her in the arm and then smiles at her. Yule kicks rocks. Rhea continues to storm off angry and vindicated with her winnings, but Allie runs to her telling her to wait up and thanks Rhea for encouraging her to do what it takes to win. Rhea tells her she's welcome and that it's nice to know the second most deserving person became the winner, after which Allie then runs to give Hunter and Tess the biggest hug she's ever given them, and Hunter shares a romantic kiss with her right after telling her how proud of her she is and that he knew she could do it. And they also tell Gabby to get in on the hug and Tess congratulates Gabby for winning the money after all, or at least a part of it. Ellie comes over to celebrate with them as both she and Gabby now have enough money to at least get out of the gutter and start pursuing their passions more thoroughly, even though they obviously aren't set for life. After the bus ride back, most of the aftermath stays the same. Tom and Jake move in together and still hang out with Miriam. Hunter and Allie reach 1 million followers. Rhea still has a successful acting career and crippling loneliness, but with less money, she doesn't have quite as many awards, but she also hasn't been completely shunned by Allie at least. And overall, her reputation, while still negative, isn't nearly as bad as it was in the original. Alex still adopts Fiore, and he and Connor are good friends. Connor gets married, which still makes Rhea cry from afar, etc. So, that was What If Connor Didn't Return. This was about 20 pages worth of scripts, but it sure felt a whole lot longer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and next video is probably going to be my next Patreon request. See you then.